This is a letter from Senator Eric Nesbitt, dated November 16, 2020, to Jocelyn Benson, expressing some very serious concerns about the conduct of the November 3, 2020 election. It was signed on to by 40 public functionaries. And the interesting thing to me is that the last sentence says, every legal vote must be counted. Really? What about the illegal votes that were counted, Senator Zorn? What about the fact that some of the votes are not recorded as having been counted? There's a serious problem with regards to that. Um, maybe they're not looking at it the way I'm looking at it, but it certainly seems to me that it opens up some real room for some nefarious actions to have been taken at the state level by the Secretary of State. So I think this is worthy of more investigation than what the Senators and House of Representatives seem to be willing to give it. We won't stop. Hi, Janice Daniels here today, Steve Marino's office. I want to find out if he's aware of the fact that his vote was not recorded as having been counted in the um, November 3rd election on the 12 31 2020 qualified voter file he's shown as not having voted. I'd like to see if he knows that and then see if it bothers him and see if maybe he'd like to open up an investigation into the 2020 election fraud. We'll see. Okay, so Representative Steve Marino wasn't in his office, of course, um, and uh, we would talk to a really nice lady. They're all really nice, you know, they, they only hire really nice people. Uh, her name was Mary Kay, as a matter of fact, I remember that. But um, we explained to her that we wanted to talk to Representative Marino about the fact that his vote, his vote wasn't counted. She didn't seem to be aware of it. She wondered if we wanted to talk to his policy director instead. And of course I said, you know, that's how they handle it. The policy director, he's the, the talker, you know, the slick one that knows how to say the right words um, so that uh, Representative Marino is kind of um, protected from the people you know, the people who he is supposed to protect and defend our Constitution. But I don't know how that works. Um, so we're going to continue on our mission. We're going to go try to find uh, Representative Roth now. And we're also going to go over and see if we can speak to uh, President Pro Tem of the, of the Senate, Aaron Nesbitt. Won't that be interesting? We'll see if any of them have any time for us, the people. We'll find out. Okay, hi Janice, it's Jody. Um, I'm over here, at Ryan, uh, Ryan Berman. Um, he was running for AG and he didn't make it at the convention, but when I was at his one of his functions, he was very, very, very well educated. And that's what I really appreciate going to some of these um, open meetings that um, they could express their concerns. And so at the meeting uh, in Plymouth, he had made a comment about how um, the House Rep has these really great bills for the judiciary, but they get snubbed at the Senate. So um, I'm running for Senate this year in 2022, and I want to go in there and find out what bills um, he actually did call um, and what ones were actually stopped by the Senate because they're, they're great bills. And if I do win in um, the primary and then win in November, I want to just take up those bills because why are we going to repeat what's already been done? Let's try to be frugal and fast and um, care about what the people think because ultimately our job is to make sure that the Constitution is being defended and protected and that's what the people do. When you take office, it's called a public functionary. So we're excited. Let's go see. Hey. Okay, so um, I just walked out and I spoke with, uh, Ryan wasn't there today, but Joel and uh, Joseph were there and uh, they were really super helpful. What they ended up doing was they gave me, of course, our constitution, we love that. They gave me a couple copies of the student guide to legislative process, because again, um, what we're trying to do is uh, bring Michigan empowerment through education and awareness, because we just have to protect what we need to be protecting. 
So what I love this, he also gave me, I love this, Michigan Constitution. I'm running for state senate and I have a role to play. Um, and my, my rules are in here. This is like the de jure handbook for your de jure office. So um, as we are downstairs going to the committee meetings about the judiciary, we're also um, asking for this citizen guide. And what's really nice about this book is that it tells you everybody that's representing you, the 110 state reps and the 38 senators. And so this is vitally important that we continue to empower Michigan through education and awareness. So um, let's go. We're going to the senator's place. Oh no, we have one more house rep to go to. Over and out. We're going to go see John Roth. He's a representative. Uh, what room is he in? 1388? 1388, yeah. Okay, let's go. I met him at the state convention, and I know he is aware of the fact that his vote was not recorded in the December 31st, 2020 qualified voter file, and that's a serious infraction. I don't know if it's incompetence or malfeasance. We're going to find out. another representative not in his office we might have to write a bill that says that representatives have to stay in their office once in a while maybe I should have had an appointment we'll give him a break the Capitol. hey we are here yeah. um, it's April 2022 um, I brought Janice with me to go um, on this little field trip and she has been a godsend because she really knows a whole lot about the legislative process because she represents the guardians, guardians of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. And that and is a lobbyist. She's a lobbyist. We found that out because she's a 5013C or whatever it is. Right. So she, I want to get the Capitol. So there's the Capitol. So we found out that um, Janice is a lobbyist and what we want to do is continue to bring awareness and education to empower the Michigan citizens to just do what's right. See that building right there? We paid for that, and that was a long time ago. It was supposed to be in Detroit, did you guys know? But then Lansing wanted it, so they ended up changing the capital. It's a big, big thing. And so now Lansing now is our capital, but as of today, this is our capital. Isn't that beautiful, you guys? And we just, we just left up there. That's the house. Ooh, it's a little chilly. That's the, that's the house building, and we are now going all the way over across to the next block the to the Senate building. So um, I'm losing my glasses. So oh, they're back on. So anyways, um, this is the Capitol, and um, it's a great day to share our wisdom with you. As um, you know, we would like more adults to join us on these field trips. So um, anything else you'd like to say, James? No, just thank God we're hearing these beautiful bells ring because we are representing God. We are God's children. Amen. Well, we're going to see Senate President Pro Tem Eric Nesbitt because his vote also wasn't recorded as received. So Janice has got the special key to get special us in. Key. And uh, sorry, the camera girl is taking a minute. There it is. Senator wow, look at this. We come right out of the elevator. Let me see. Wow. Senator Nesbitt. And. We're going to make friends with him. Do you have a business card there? I have a business card. And then this is the view of the Senate building that we are in. It's pretty beautiful. It doesn't feel well. He's not feeling well. But this is the view of the Senate building. That's Lansing. But we're trying to get a copy of a letter that may have been responded to by Secretary of State Benson on November 16th. All of these representatives, 40 of them, representatives and senators, wrote a letter of very grave concern on November 16, 2020, to Jocelyn Benson saying that every legal vote must count. Well, we are here to ask Senator Nesbitt if he knows that his vote on the November 3rd election wasn't recorded as received on the December 31st, 2020 qualified voter file. Every legal vote must count. Well, we knew that 
Senator Nesbitt wouldn't be in his office. Um, in fact, he's not feeling well, so our best wishes go out to him for his speedy recovery. Uh, but um, we couldn't get a copy of the answer to this letter, but we were given information about how to get it by going to the very cumbersome senate.michigan.gov website. And of course, we'll have to do a lot of searching, but we'll see if we can find it. Um, I, I, I really would have thought that this letter was important enough to follow up with making sure that Secretary of State Benson did respond to it, and she may have. We just have to do our own searching for it. A little bit disappointed, but um, of course, all of the staff are very friendly. They're just wonderful people and pray that we can make an impact and maybe teach them a few things about the Constitution and how they're supposed to protect and defend it. That's all we want them to do. That's all. to see Senator Edmund Groom. I haven't seen him in a couple of months. It should be an interesting meeting. Mm, we were up here. We went to Calumet and yeah, we went Calumet. to Iron Mountain. That's all the way in the nose, I think. No, Iron Mountain's here. Oh, there's Iron Mountain. Okay. Houghton. Oh, yeah, oh, Houghton. We there. Yeah, we were up here. That's when we went on our... Yeah, our oh, there's a Senate committee mm -hmm. meeting going this on. This is district. He's District 38. Finish talking to um, Paul, who's Ed right. McGroom's legislative aide. And Paul and I know each other. He was in the meeting that I was in with uh, Senator McGroom back in September of 2021. And I asked him if he thought that the election was stolen. And of course, he said no. And I said, well, I think there's overwhelming evidence that in fact it was stolen, but I appreciate your saying that. In fact, it was Jody that asked him the question. I shouldn't say that I asked him the question. Jody asked him the question. So we decided we'd go visit uh, our buddy, uh, Jim Runstead. Let's see. Oh no, wait a minute. He's in appropriations right now, so he's not gonna be there either. Um, I think we'd call it a day, Jody. Let's get in the car and get going back home.